By God's grace, this is going to be the fifth election that I'm taking part in and voting, playing my part in uh, so far as the civic duty is concerned. And I know that uh, there are those who have taken part a, a number of times, many, many more times. I know that there are those for which this election could be their very first. Where, wherever you find yourself on that spectrum, my sharing today is about moving from apathy to action. Apathy because in this particular election, we have heard that uh, the, the youth vote in as much as the youth are the bulk of the population, the youth, uh, the youth vote is not going to feature significantly because uh, during the call for voter registration, a number of young people were apathetic. And so I want to talk about moving from apathy to action. What is apathy all about? I, I looked it up on the online dictionary and uh, apathy is to be without feeling. It's a place where you don't feel like doing something. And I don't know whether you're in that space. Perhaps not even in so far as election matters are concerned. You could uh, just be in a place where you are devoid of feeling. You don't want to be engaged. You're like a car that's in neutral. You have the potential and the capacity to move, uh, but, but you're not engaged. You're disengaged. I recall a number of years back, uh, it was in 2010, when I had an accident. I was involved in this accident that shook me. Very, very traumatic. And on account of that accident, I was apathetic insofar as driving was concerned. I didn't want to engage in driving. And that was the case for about two years. Uh, it took me a while to heal and to just move forward and uh, shake off, move forward from that uh, traumatic incident. And so I'm speaking to someone who is in that space. It could be political matters, like I hinted at. It could be various other aspects of your life. You are apathetic, you're, you're lacking feeling. You do not want to be engaged. Another definition of apathy is uh, related to pathos. Pathos is about passion. And so when you see that word, uh, that letter A before a word, most times it negates what comes after that. And so it's talking about lacking passion. You're passionless, you're driveless. You are uh, devoid of feeling and basically you are disengaged. In this political season, I pray that by God's grace, you will be able to step forward and act. And what is it that enables us to step out of apathy? I want to, to share a scripture that has blessed me and challenged me from the Gospel of Luke, chapter five, verse, uh, verse five. Peter and some of the disciples of Jesus who are fishermen had been engaged in work. They were in the night shift and because they were not fruitful, they didn't catch any fish, they got into this state of being apathetic. They lacked feeling, they lacked drive, they lacked motivation to keep going. And uh, I see that in verse 5, Jesus said to them, or rather Simon answered to Jesus, Master, we have worked all night long but we've caught nothing. Have you ever felt like that? I've talked about having voted, uh, by God's grace, this will be my, my fifth time. And so having voted four times previously before, and uh, you could be in that place where you don't want to engage because you voted and you've played your part, you've cast your ballot, but you have little or nothing to show for it. You cannot say that because you cast your vote, your word has changed because you cast your vote, uh, your, your quality of life has significantly improved. Because you cast your vote, your leader has been able to sort out certain aspects like healthcare. I know that there are many, many people who like Peter will say, we have voted. It's not all night long. We voted this number of elections, but have caught nothing. Or we voted this number of times, we participated this number of times. And instead of there being a value addition, what has happened is that there's been a negation. There's been subtraction. There's been division. And you're saying, what's the sake of it? And so Simon says, Master, we have worked, we've toiled all night long, but we've caught nothing. Yet he says, if you say so, I will let down the net. 
And friends, that's my challenge to us today. The thing that makes the difference is the Lord's word, because he has said so, because he has called us to be dual citizens, citizens of heaven and citizens of earth, because he's called us to be engaged in the business of the land, to be engaged in what, what is happening in our nation and engage beyond prayer and going and playing our part because the master has, has said so. I pray that because of the Lord's word, you would move from a place of apathy and you would move to take action. You'd move from disengagement and that that gear would be engaged into drive and that you would go, you would cast your ballot you would trust God that in this election, his will shall be done. And that through this election, God will raise a critical mass of transformational leaders. And because he has said so, because of his word, because you're listening and praying and trying to discern who the Lord would have you vote for, because he has said so, I pray that you will act. This story goes on to say that Simon, once again tries, even though he had toiled and toiled and toiled, Simon casts his net and he caught a big, big catch. That is my prayer for you. In those places where you have been apathetic, passionless, driveless, feelings devoid, there are no feelings. I pray that the Lord would help you to hear his voice and for you to act in line with his word. And as you do so, may you see and realize fruitfulness in your life. Thank you for watching today. And my call to you is, as we engage in voting, let's go out, let's play our part, let's act, let's move away from apathy. Let's trust God to do something new in this election. Thanks for watching and may God thoroughly bless you.